Hi, I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. We open in a boutique where the idle rich are shopping for furs. What an elegant coat. And a magnificent color. Oh, darling, what do you think of this? If you like it, darling, it's all yours. Oh, you're a dream. Oh, darling, it's simply adequate. It's a good thing PETA doesn't exist yet. All right, everybody, stand still and no one will be injured. This is a stick-up. Then again, maybe they do. These people better watch out for buckets of red paint. Get out of here. Who are you, anyhow? Your friendly neighborhood hold-up man at your service, sir. What is it, some vulgar joke? Ah, yes. But the joke is on you, my good fellow. And there's nothing vulgar about half a million in furs. <laughs> my mistake, it's not PETA. I do believe it's that arch criminal, the Joker. Give the man a Cupid doll. What was your first clue, Sherlock? The green hair, the goofy suit, or the garish makeup? I can see how this guy's brains made him rich. The Joker has his henchmen gather everybody into a tight group in the center of the room, then has them shoot confetti all over them. <laughs> oh, thank you, dear lady. He took a hairpin. That's it. As they make their escape, Commissioner Gordon gives us a little more exposition. A hairpin? First we get a report that he's stolen a hole from a golf green. And now a hairpin? How do you steal a hole? A hole is nothing. So he filled it up? Since it was a golf course, I'm guessing he took the plastic cup that lines the hole, and that's what they're talking about. But he stole a hole from a golf course just sounds goofy. Of course they call him Batman, even though the Joker hasn't really done anything yet. Everybody knows he's going to pull some big crime, so may as well call Batman now and beat the rush. As Alfred answers the bat phone, we see Bruce and Dick doing a jigsaw puzzle. But leave it to Bruce Wayne to find some way to take the fun out of it and try to make it educational. But it's so much harder with the pieces upside down, Bruce. Of course. But think of what excellent training it is for your visual memory. Gosh, yes. I guess that's true. It's a good thing young Dick has Bruce as his mentor to constantly remind him that life is serious business and he shouldn't waste time enjoying it. Alfred tells them about the bat phone call and they take off. Alfred gives some lame excuse to Aunt Harriet, but in a few minutes, she may be able to find out the truth for herself. Because you might have noticed that Dick didn't get the door closed all the way. She should be able to hear the conversation and everything else, and if she wanders through that open door, she's going to find out a lot of things. Well, there goes that plot line. It arrived while you were on the way here, Batman. Timed perfectly. And we'll proceed with extreme care. He gingerly cuts through the twine, then through a big ribbon on the package inside. Time to open it. Robin. Chief, Commissioner, stand back, please. Where does he keep that thing? I have yet to notice a pouch this big on his belt. So where did he get it from? Strange, but harmless. Killjoy Batman has to pop the balloon, of course. Later, he'll give Robin an important life lesson by making him fix it. A small recording machine with a tape on it. Play it, Batman. Good evening, Commissioner. I assume Batman is there by now, so give him my regards, will you? <laughs> Oh, by the way, did you hear what the maid said when the Duchess asked if she'd given the goldfish fresh water that morning? No, Your Highness, he hasn't yet used what he had yesterday. <laughs> O'Hara reasons that maybe this is a clue to what the Joker is planning. You think? They all continue to mull it over until... Why would he want a hole from a golf course? The golf course! Of course! His Highness, the Maharaja of Nimpa, arrived in Gotham City today, and he's so rich he plays golf with jewel-inlaid solid gold clubs. That's it, Batman! The joke on the tape! His Highness and the gold and goldfish! And he's scheduled to play in one hour 
at the Winnie Coto Country Club, where he stole the hole. Let's go. It's about the course, of course. And once again, I have to ask, wouldn't the police be covering an event like this? Wouldn't they at least be providing partial security for a visiting foreign dignitary? Especially one who uses jewel-encrusted gold clubs. Who's watching out for this guy if the Gotham City Police can't even remember that he's there? J.W. Pepper is a better lawman than these guys. At the course, the Joker and his men are staking out the Maharaja, getting around in their cleverly disguised vehicle. I am not going near that. Batman and Robin get to the country club and talk to the president, who just happens to be the guy whose wife the Joker stole the hairpin from. So now we know what that was about, though it's possible Batman hasn't put it together yet. Has the Maharaja of Nimpa begun his round? Not five minutes ago with his honor the mayor. They're still on the first hole. There's only two of them. They've been there for five minutes and they're still on the first hole. Clearly those expensive clubs don't do much for the Maharaja's game. Is there some vantage point overlooking the course? Any place where we won't be conspicuous. In those get-ups, you're going to be inconspicuous, all right. They get to a spot and Batman pulls out the world's dopiest binoculars. Odd. Everything looks serene. Let me look. Robin is much too young and inexperienced to have his own, you see. I'm betting the divot went farther than the ball did. I think I see the divot on the ground there, so I was right. Very fine chip shot, your highness. What's so fine? It should have been closer. Yes, but the grass grows the wrong way, your highness. The grass grows the wrong way. <laughs> Ah, if this were only Nymphanese bluegrass. I'm away, Your Highness. Mr. Mayor, please don't putt while I'm talking. Uh, forgive me, Your Highness. All right, go ahead. And don't eat with your mouth full. The mayor blows his putt and the Maharaja takes his turn. Yellow gas. So let's stand here and talk about it instead of getting down there. It is gas. Quick to the Batmobile. Now we'll be quick. Two guys in a golf cart come by and grab the clubs. As the Batmobile pursues, two more guys come out and grab something else. I believe that's actually called kidnapping. Bruce, what have you been teaching this kid? Well, hang a left and go after him. With a forklift! Let's get going and make an emergency bat turn. Not this time, old chum. Have to think of the golfers. The retro rockets would burn up the course for 100 yards. First of all, you don't need a bat turn, just a left turn. Second, as far as we can tell, they're pointed the same direction you are, so you don't even need to turn around. Third, Retro rockets? Fourth, a man is being kidnapped and you're worried about the lawn. What's wrong with this picture? And fifth, retro rockets? See? A simple left turn and you're right on their tail. And then you're not. Suddenly they spot it again. Holy shrinkage! Give credit where it's due, Batman. That was a great trick. They find a note inside the toy truck. Batman. 
Did you hear about the kid who wanted to sell his dog for $50,000? He got his price, traded it for two $25,000 cats, but you can't make a deal like that for the Maharaja because we've got plenty of cats already. Don't call us, we'll call you. Obviously, the clue in this joke is the $50,000 dog. Plenty of cats. Cats, cats, and more cats. It could be an old refinery, Cats, Cats, Cats and Company. It's been out of use for years, but it would make a perfect hideout. It sounds too simple. Almost as if he wanted us to solve it immediately. Have to be on our guard, Batman. Right, let's go! Or the cats. The clue could be the cats. But as Robin said, it's way too easy, so it's bound to be a trap. Let's go walk into it. Robin brings the little truck so he can play with it later as Dick Grayson. In the hideout, the Joker is setting things up and talking with his requisite bimbo. Joker. Why didn't you get me something longer than this when you had the chance? Oh, that's not my style, lovey. Any common hoodlum can do that. Oh, but never fear, my dear. We'll buy you countless furs and jewels. Oh, gee, Joker, you're perfect. You're yeah, practically. Joker always goes for the intellectual types. Batman and Robin arrive and start looking for a way in. What do we do, Batman? Use the bat ropes? Go in through the skylight? Let's try the direct approach. With his twisted mind, it could surprise him. Strange, it's not locked. Almost as if he wants us to come in. Now I'm sure it's a trap. Let's be sneaky. With more Bugs Bunny type stealth like that, they make their way in to where they see... Gambling's illegal in this state, so we have an excuse to bash him over the head with our batarangs. They hit. Holy looking glass. A truck with folding mirrors in its sides. No wonder it vanished. Yes, with nothing but the green of the golf course to reflect, it turned green too and seemed to disappear. I'm sorry, could you go into a little more excruciating detail? That didn't take long enough. Before they can do much else. I cut their circulation off. Oh, 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 oh. If they do not see the joke, pull the ropes and let them choke. <laughs> it's like being caught in a barrel of snakes. Be sure and tell him that he's got you completely helpless. Wouldn't want him to get underconfident. That little rhyme of the Jokers was actually pretty clever, and I'm very glad Caesar Romero didn't try to sing it in that voice. Heard about Batman, but this is the first time I've ever met him. And the last. So that's your dirty game. We might have known. Why don't we think about this, Joker? Another poor, misguided damsel is wonderstruck by Batman's deep, abiding goodness and his huge muscles. All they have to do is look at him, and they're instantly ready to give up the life of crime and follow him anywhere, especially to his boudoir. Unfortunately for them, once they get there, Batman thinks it's a sleepover and pulls out the peanut butter and crackers. Joker decides to give them what he calls a sporting chance, whatever that may mean. And now, my dynamic duo, something I've been waiting to do for a long time. My funny ray has neutralized the gadgets in your utility belts for at least an hour. I'm not even going to try and comment on the science of that. I'll just say that I really thought the Joker could come up with a more creative name than Funny Ray. <laughs> You're both good swimmers, I hope. Fair. Then you can easily remain afloat for an hour, I presume? If we weren't weighted down or something. I'll tell you, boss, you let these guys escape, it'll be the mistake of your career. Yeah. Do keep out of this. 
If he wants to give them a sporting chance, that's his business. And besides, I haven't gotten to make out with Batman yet. Joker locks them in a smokestack and says he'll give them a little time to get out of the ropes before he starts flooding the place. Holy smokestack! What a spot to get out of! Right, Batman. There are only two ways to get out of there. One, I let you out. And two, you jump 50 feet straight up. <laughs> Too bad they left the Batzooka in the car. Joker starts filling the room. But that's gas! I do believe you're right! <laughs> but then who said anything about water? <laughs> but you can't float in gas! No, but you can drown in it! If you're surprised, don't be. His girlfriend doesn't like it, but Joker doesn't care. Too narrow in here to use the bat rope. There's nothing for them to catch on. And he's neutralized the rest of the stuff in the utility belt. What are we going to do? You take a deep breath and I'll stand on your shoulders. That way I can at least last a little longer. Sorry about you. Unless there's some way to help us. I don't know. They're gonna need help. But help from where? Not the Joker, certainly. <laughs> and no one else knows where they are. Don't make it obvious, whatever you do. Subtlety is the name of this game. Is this the Joker's crowning jest? Find out tomorrow night. Same time, same channel. But be prepared. No help is likely to come. In the next episode, we spend two minutes watching Batman and Robin suffocate to death, then go to 24 minutes of commercials. I like Cesar Romero a lot better in this one. He has a much better handle on the character's psyche, as well as some of his antics, such as dancing around like a maniac when he's causing chaos. He's a lot scarier, too. This time, I honestly believe he's the ruthless, casual-minded killer that he's supposed to be, and killing Batman is basically the equivalent of nailing a Boone and Crockett-worthy elk during hunting season. Killing another man means no more to him than that. And when he makes that crazy face, it seriously says, Yeah, and you might be next! Too bad it looks like he's going to be thwarted by Batman's weird psychic power over women. I still don't understand how that works or why, or if this Batman even has a clue that he has it. But there have already been several occasions like this one where it's just a bit too convenient. Then again, as I'm writing this script, I haven't actually watched the next episode yet, so I could be way off, but I doubt it. I know one way to find out, so I'll see you next time. I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac.